Hey there, welcome back to the search. It's time for audio it's logs. The executive level that it's safe there. That security forces have it locked down, but it's the getting there that's the problem. She said things will soon be under control, and they've asked for external aid. It, it tells you how serious things have gotten if they've called for outside help. But you know what? It's fine. If they've got everything under control, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for them. It's terrifying enough listening to the noises, let alone being out there. I'm safe here. Another Mallory log to start us off there. Uh, it seems that uh, a certain somebody who we may know is trying to get her to go to the executive forum. Just like they were trying to get us to go to the executive forum. Very interesting. It seems we are not the only one uh, trying to make the journey to look for help. What the? Oh, hey. Another human being. Oh, damn it. Not again. Well, you can fuck right off. I swear I... Hey. You're actually normal. Sort of. Kind of. Hi. For a moment, I thought you were one of these psychos. Already ran into a dozen or so of them today. Guess I've always attracted the wrong type of guy. Well, I don't know what that says about me, because they've been chasing my ass around, too. <laughs> First time I've smiled in days. Thank you. I'm Irina, by the way. Trained engineer and, apparently, born survivor. Welcome to the club, Irina. Got any idea what's going on here? Yeah. This company finally managed to burn the final vestiges of humanity out of us. Guess we're the lucky ones, though. Didn't drop dead? Haven't blown a fuse? At least not yet. You're searching for something? <laughs> Look at Mr. Inquisitive. Just trying to find something that would help me stay alive a bit longer. A good staff. One that's not actually falling apart. On the off chance someone needs a good beating. I'll see what I can do. Oh, look at you! The White Knight! I could get it myself, you know. But as long as you're offering. So what's with the staff and everything? I could ask you the same question. I guess sitting things out is just not our way. I never liked those smelter bots. Always kept an eye on them, even before this shit went down. It's time to push that damn emergency stop and scrap them for good. Amen. Better get going now. And just as I was getting to know you. Well, all right, Arena. If I happen to come across a staff, I'll send it in your direction. Uh. Hey, Creo. We oh have God. Well time to listen to Don too. Man, I'm not getting a word in edgewise here. Ah! Oh God, not you. But you want more, right? Why? I am trying to listen to Don Hackett. When Creo has state-of-the-art facilities right here. What if I told you you can have one every week? Sounds lovely, Don. Right. With Creo's Dream Tour Systems, or DTS, you can go anywhere in the world and even beyond. DTS feeds directly into your neural interface, and voila! You're on a beach in Rio, or Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Something more cultural? How about a stroll along the scene in beautiful Paris? Or what about enjoying the Colosseum during the height of the Roman Empire? That's right. DTS can fulfill oh. all your desires. Enjoy a two-week vacation in less than an hour with DTS. Wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, just like you want. There's so much to offer. Why would you ever leave? Good question, Don. Good question. Well, it seems that, uh... It seems that in addition to all the other stuff the neural interface implants can do, uh, they also can make you see things and experience stuff like going to the scene in Paris or or Rio or all the other stuff he said. And I gotta say, not a fan. This is Benberg, so listen up. I don't know if you made it out of recycling. I don't even know if you can hear me. But if you can, meet me at the outbound station. Stay safe. I'll be waiting. We can make it together. Boy, this episode is just information overload all of a sudden. 
Now, I want you to remember Ben Burke. I want you to picture Ben Burke clearly in your mind. Security officer, born survivor, man just trying to make it to safety in a world full of zombie men armed with power tools. Okay, picture Ben Burke in your mind. Just, you know, don't forget about him, because he's, he's going to be talking over the intercom for the rest of this level. So it's interesting. It's it, One thing that is very interesting about this game is that we have met pretty much all of the NPCs now. Uh, there's a couple more, but um, most of the interaction with NPCs is in this area. Like, th this is, you know, central production. This is where all the workers like you are hanging out. You know, people like Irina, uh, Davey, Hobbs, just trying to do their jobs. And then everything goes to hell a couple days ago, and well, it's been a struggle to survive ever since. Has it been a struggle to survive for us? Eh, maybe not, because we only woke up a couple hours ago. But still, struggle to survive. So I was looking down there at that, uh at that bridge because uh, that bridge is a pain in the ass there are like two of the rivet gun guys and one of those three wheeled uh, three wheeled engineering robots there so like trying to approach that bridge from the front is probably possible it's probably possible in the same way that many things in life are possible but it's it's not feasible I will say Decided to decided to pal around with the the twin rig weapons a little bit longer because they're I never get tired of them, man. It's it's like you got portable Wolverine claws. How could you not like that? How? Oh God. I don't know what this guy was doing before we walked in here, but boy. Or or that that could be like a a little hideout for the Liberator. You remember remember the Liberator? Maybe that's maybe that's what that guy does in there. So yeah, th and then there's also this guy who patrols around in this area. Like this 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 whole area is just a goddamn death trap if you approach it from the front. So the uh, the twin rigged weapons and the normal like uh, sword type weapons. They are very good for exhausting enemy stamina on, on lighter armored opponents. So, basically, like, here's how it goes. So, the lighter weapons are better for, say, lighter opponents. Um, like, these Rhino guys or the Lynx suit guys, they, they are very good for exhausting the stamina of people who aren't wearing, like, big fat guy armor. The heavy weapons are better for stumbling people wearing heavy armor. That makes sense. It's a nice, it's a nice system. So Ferguson dumps us, then it's all buddy, buddy, come to my party. Fuck him. Listen to this shit. Hi, pals. As you may know, next week is my birthday. Who does he think he is after what he pulled? There'll be tons of cakes if you're hung in the break area as well. Like chokes on him. First the drones, then John, and now the salaries. He's got a screw loose if he thinks we'll forgive him from death. One of these days, I'm gonna grab my tools and tighten it for him. It seems there is some dissatisfaction with upper management at Creo, which is uh, probably probably not a good thing when uh, the lower class workers are equipped with uh, high grade weaponry and or power tools and you know power armor. Probably it probably makes for a good. Uh, lower class rising up situation I suppose and who knows maybe that's what happened here at Creo so um Ferguson is the head manager of uh, central production B and we are going to be hearing quite a bit about the guy uh I like Ferguson these guys don't like Ferguson but I like Ferguson uh so keep a keep an ear out for more audio logs about the guy and who knows maybe someday we'll meet him in person so we just picked up our first, I think, uh, implant that increases our proficiency scaling, which uh, means that this is a good time to talk about that. So proficiency basically governs a boost to your damage uh, based on how often you have used certain weapons. Like uh, you can see in the bottom left there, uh, 
that that yellow bar indicates our current proficiency and when it reaches the top we gain another proficiency level and every weapon has the ability to scale with proficiency in a different way like uh Often the, the twin rigged claws, they scale very high with proficiency so that they get a bonus from using them for longer. Whereas weapons like the hammer don't scale very high with proficiency because they already do really, really high base damage. So basically the lower base damage a weapon has, the higher it will scale with proficiency so that you have a, uh, a little bonus for using it longer, which is nice. And uh, the implant we just picked up straight up adds a couple of levels onto this proficiency. I'm still waiting at the outbound station. I want to try and get to the old bio labs. I'm hoping it's safer there. But I'm not leaving without you. I know recycling and the waste storage are a mess, but get through there and it will get better. Recycling and the waste storage. On my way there, Ben, old buddy. I like that if you go through this area very fast, it really seems so like he's pretty impatient. Home. It's been over a day now and nothing. She's not responding when I call. It's getting worse out there and the noises are freaking me out. I can hear them, but at least there hasn't been any more screaming. Well, that's a blessing. There's other sounds. I did see one guy. He was in a terrible state, but he seemed to know what he was doing. Heading to the executive form. Maybe I should have gone what she suggested. So, it seems that we are now assembling a little bit of a timeline, thanks to, to Mallory here. Uh, Mallory got her the surgery uh, a, a day-ish before the surge, and then the surge happened. So, Mallory, like us, only woke up pretty recently. Like, for all we know, Mallory might still be running around. We're only a little bit behind her. Um... Ooh, launcher. So good. So, it looks like, it's starting to look like Sally is enlisting a whole army, a whole army of exosuit folks to uh, run around and try and make it to the executive forum, which I guess is noble of her. Good job, Sally. Of course, the implication is that it's Sally, I suppose. Like, yeah, I guess they haven't literally said, oh, this lady named Sally has contacted me over the radio. But whatever. I don't think it's much of a spoiler. But I mean, you know, I guess that's one good thing about Sally being in the executive forum, you know, is that she has, um, she somehow has access to all of that stuff, so, uh, I guess it's good that she got stuck up there. And hey, look, another we audio log. Overtime hours. My guys have been relying on their implants, but... I'm noticing increasingly erratic behavior from them. This schedule was meant to be temporary, but it's been months now with no sign of respite. Now, I don't blame my team for using, but the side effects are becoming increasingly apparent. There's even been fights. And, you know, some people are just acting downright weird. And we're going to have big problems soon if something isn't done, and I, I won't be held responsible. So let's, let's take measure of the situation at Creo in central production while we are fighting this crane here. So, they've got dissatisfaction with upper management for, you know, spoiling the workers' fun, spoiling their good time and all that stuff, making making work uh, a general hell for them in this place that they're stuck in and can't leave. Okay. You've got the workers using illegal implants to boost their working performance and how long they can pretty much stay awake and stay working uh, for presumably unpaid overtime hours. So you've got all that and you've got people complaining about violence against other workers and you've got the workers talking about wanting to incite violence against their managers. You know, so something tells me that the situation at Creo is not going to get better, but in fact is going to get worse. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe everybody will join hands and sing Kumbaya. I don't know. We have, we have yet to uncover the full timeline here. 
So uh, the concussive drone is pretty good at stunning these robots so that they can't move. And based on the way their animation just like totally freezes, I think it's a bug. However, it is a beneficial bug that if you slam into one of these guys with your concussive module and you hit them in the back, they'll just freeze them in place so you can walk behind them and then take them out. Ooh, careful. Oh shit, I'm gonna sneeze. Not during a recording. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's how you know that I am a human recording this and not a robot, is because I have the ability to sneeze during recordings. Something, something, the turtle is on its back and you're not helping it. Welcome to the surge. So for this, this whole episode so far, uh, I have been making sporadic use of the uh, of the medievoltaic injector, uh, that implant that we picked up in one of the first episodes. Uh, I said that I was going to be using it because it's very good, and now we're seeing why. Basically, the medievoltaic injector lets you live forever as long as you have energy. Believe me, you've seen the bodies, but I've seen him doing it. Why'd I make this up? Others have seen him too. It's just one guy. It's always the same. Bodies dismembered, missing limbs. God knows what he's doing with them. You know, I, I know this liberated story happened decades ago. But what if he's back? What if it's not just urban legend? What if he's real? What if this whole mess is because of him? So that's interesting. That That is a very interesting audio log. Because it lets you know, pretty much, that the... That the liberator logs that we've been picking up happened very very long ago like i mentioned this when it was relevant but this is the first time the game actually tells you that the liberator story that we've been hearing about happened a decade ago approximately so it's been quite some time since the liberator uh, was hanging around but it seems it seems as if before the surge there was some kind of copycat doing his thing some kind of some kind of exosuit wearing uh, injection junkie running around central production, cutting off the limbs of everybody in his way and picking them up so that he could take them and use them for his own purposes. You know, that sounds a lot like us, doesn't it? Huh. Weird. Let's not think about, uh, Let's, let's not think about the implications of that right now. We've picked up the Reclamation Buddy implant, which basically just increases your tech scrap multiplier artificially, so uh, you don't have to cut off enemy body parts to do it. Like, and that's actually really clever. That's actually a really clever usage of the system. Um, basically, the Reclamation Buddy implants just start your, your tech scrap multiplier off at a certain amount, so that all of the tech scrap you pick up is multiplied by 0.2 or whatever, which means you end up starting at 120% tech scrap. And then you can continue to go up from there past the usual limit of, uh, of, of three times as much. So using, using all of the Reclamation Buddy implants stacked, you can get like up to like five times as much tech scrap from any source. It's, it's pretty nuts, especially on enemies that give you like, um, really high tech scrap like the uh, the smelter bots like if you kit your if you're in new game plus and you kit yourself out totally with the reclamation buddy implants and then you kill one of those smelter bots you're you're getting like you're getting like 60 or 70 thousand tech scrap it's pretty crazy unfortunately they are of course gated by you know being placed around the game world so we can't have fun with that just yet but if you leave the smelter bots alive like they make for a great source of tech scrap late in the game. However, if you do that, you miss out on some uh, pretty fun special things. And those smelter bots, by the way, uh, in that area that we just left, are the smelter bots Irina was talking about. If you uh, if you give her a staff before coming through there, uh, there are ways to get a staff we can give her before before going through that area. Uh, she will take out one of the smelter bots for you, which I don't want her to do because that would cost me like seven or eight thousand tech scrap Because I then I wouldn't be able to kill it myself and get the scrap from its corpse So uh, we're, we're gonna give her the staff after we're done with this area Because uh, it's you know It's more more economical for us So 
So the only downside really of the medieval take injector is of course that it takes energy. So you kind of have to decide how you want to do this. Like, you have the choice now of either cutting off the enemy limbs or using the energy to restore your health. Which is why I'm using uh, a low damage weapon like the claws, because uh, it allows me to build up more energy before the enemy dies because I do less damage. So it's, it's beneficial overall. Uh, yes. Don't worry, nothing bad. Just wanted to see if you could get me some tech scraps. Uh, how do I know I can trust you? I mean, who are you? Well, I can help you there. I'm Joe. Anyway, I know you. Well, at least of you. And I chose to trust you. What if I'd rather keep what's mine? Well, I'd be very disappointed. It is important, though. Believe me. And if you help me, I'd be ever so grateful. Hmm. What do you need the tech scrap for? I'm making something. It's important. Very important. You could say it's a matter of life and death. Okay, I guess. Guess I'm able to spare some. Oh, thanks. I won't forget this. No problem, Joe. Need to make a move. In that case, I won't waste any more of your time. I mean, hey. She was friendly, I guess. So that's good enough for me. All it takes is not wanting to murder me, and uh, you've earned my good graces. It's, it's not very hard to make friends with me in the kind of world that the Surge is. Now, of course, the other downside of the Medieval Take Injector is that you can't carry around as many actual health injectors. So uh, that means that you have less permanent healing, but more temporary healing, you see. And hey, hey, we have met a new enemy type-ish. Uh, these guys are uh, wearing a new armor set that is especially effective against uh, hazards, which is good because right now we're going through waste storage and there are goopy, goopy piles of stuff on the ground. Uh, that's nuclear hazardous waste, by the way, that we're walking through here. So uh, the liquidators, they're pretty well dressed for the job. So who knows, soon we might be wearing the liquidator set. The liquidators are using a uh, a weapon called the clink. Cl oh, good luck pronouncing it. It's called. It looks like it's pronounced cl cling, right? But with an e. But like I, I like to pronounce it clinge, cause clinge is funnier. It's probably pronounced cling or clingy, maybe. Who knows? To all sector twelve employees. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but unlicensed gambling violates federal and state law and thus places Creel at a not insignificant risk of criminal charges and liability. So, all raging drone events are to be canceled immediately. Borrowed drones and other company equipment can be returned anonymously. Don't make either bad guy here. Oh. I love a good drone fight as much as the next guy, but what we're doing here is too important to risk in fractions of this nature. R. Ferguson. Huh. Well, I guess now we know what that one guy was talking about. You may recall that in the first episode-ish, uh, we spotted some graffiti on the wall uh, around a pile of drones and a makeshift wrestling ring for them. Uh, the raging drone events are the key to the events surrounding Ferguson, because the workers in Central Production B were uh, having some pow some powwows around uh, Central Production and abandoned production. Uh, you know, getting together after work, stealing some stealing some drones that weren't being used, and pitting them against each other like as battle bots or something. Well, Ferguson didn't want to get in trouble, so he put a stop to that, and uh, I suppose that contributes to uh, their their dislike of the guy. I don't know. 
I think he was, you know, he's just doing his job. But, you know, whatever. So yeah, now you're seeing the downside of the Medivoltaic Injector, which is I'm out of healing items. I don't have any more health injectors. So now I have to rely on being aggressive to survive because without any other way to heal, the only way I can recover da any damage is by dealing damage. So I gotta get, I gotta get like deep in there. I gotta get real deep into the enemy's territory. And you can, you can take that however you want. I mean, I don't know if this robot has any territory for me to get deep into. I think I passed out from the pain. I don't know how long I've been lying there, cold on the concrete floor, half dead, awakening to a nightmare. I couldn't remember where I was, who I was, but when I saw those people, what happened to them? Somehow I made it to Ops, and the memories are blurry and hazy. I remember the pain. I've never been so afraid in my whole life. Didn't even realize I was totally blind in my left eye until Medbay patched me up. I guess I'm better now. Man, this Mallory lady, she she has had a she has had a rough time. <laughs> like, man, Creo has not been kind to her so far. Oh, that's a hell of an execution. I mean, to be fair, Creo has not really been kind to anybody working here, but she she had an especially bum rep. Like, man, she was in a bad state before she got to the ops. D. When did you check in? I waited 30 minutes for you yesterday. That's far too long for me to be out and about. I need those items. But if you can't procure them, I have other sources, so don't worry. Just let me know you're okay. Now that, that, that log is the first in a series of logs about, say, undercover corporate espionage. So, um... I'm not going to ask you to keep that log in mind because it was like 30 seconds long, but, uh, you know, it'll come up again and I'll mention it when we get there. That's the thing about the logs in this game is that a lot of them are kind of weirdly paced so that you will get the first log in a series last and then like find ones in the middle, like scattered around across the game. It's, it's very strange. They, ch they chose to go about this in a very weird way. But, uh, the good news, right, is that a lot of these have pretty straightforward storylines, so to speak. So, uh, it's not that bad to, uh, try and piece together what's going on. And hey, hey, we have put together one of the biggest shortcuts in the game just now. Uh, the Surge is full of loopbacks, very large ones. And we have just gone directly from the very, very end of the level back to the very, very beginning. Check that out, huh? Fancy pants. I really appreciate this shortcut. I'm, I'm so glad that they put that shortcut in there because there's a couple of areas uh, specifically where there are no shortcuts for a very long time and it can, it can be bad, man. It can be real bad. So we, we have got a lot of tech scrap here and uh, a lot of a lot of stuff we could do. We, we could craft the scarab gear, we could make the liquidator set, uh, we could spend it all on upgrading our health, uh, we could upgrade some of our weapons, we could check out some of the new stuff. Th there are a lot of possibilities here. However, the liquidator set is in my opinion one of the more useful sets in the game until you come across... Uh, a later set that also focuses on um, that also focuses on uh, elemental damage and stuff. And here, here I'm just showing off the difference in proficiency scaling because this hammer we picked up, the Bloodhound, uh, it has a uh, it has better proficiency scaling. Ergo, eventually, once we get our proficiency up, it will do more damage than the other hammer we have. So I don't know if I have enough core power to wear the Liquidator set. I'm pretty sure I do, because the Liquidator set, like the Lynx set, uh, doesn't have that high requirements. Also, it looks kind of silly, but it it protects you quite well. So we're gonna we're gonna be putting it on. 
Now we, we've got a hell of a lot of new implants here. There's, oh boy, this is a nightmare. However, we already know that we are on our way to go and fight a boss. Like, obviously, we're at the end of the area, and that spider robot thing has been haunting us for quite some time now. So, uh, obviously, we're on our way to have a showdown with that thing. And this is where some of the strategy of the implants in the Surge comes in. If you fight a boss and die, or you know that a boss is coming up, you can go back to the Ops Center, and you can customize your implants for a boss fight. And you can make sure that uh, you are appropriately prepared um, in however way you want to play it. Like, um, I've put on an, Im an implant here that increases my impact damage when I have high energy. Because this bo I already know from playing the game that this boss can be stumbled. Uh, and it is easier to do so if you use a weapon that has high impact. Like, say, the hammer or similar. So... It pays to pay attention, <laughs> so that you end up appropriately prepared for the challenges at hand. Like, that's something that I really, really appreciate about the Surge, is that it allows you to prepare pretty much as much as you want for situations that you know are coming or that you can anticipate. It, it rewards you for giving some thought to uh, areas before jumping right into them. And that's why there are so many shortcuts back to the Ops Center, because they expect you to use them and go back there. Like, I have unlocked every shortcut in this area so far, but I've only gone back to the Ops Center twice, and once was only to talk to the NPCs. But if you're playing this game for the first time, they expect you to be taking advantage of that and playing it a lot more methodically, which is, I mean, it's cool. It is a very cool way to encourage the player to, to take care of, you know, the way they play the game. So the reason that we put on the Liquidator set... Ooh! <laughs> the reason we put on the Liquidator set is because it makes us immune to these piles of goop. Normally, stepping in these goop piles will damage Warren for, like, not a lot at first, but if you stand in them for a while, it'll start taking up a lot of your health. So, um, it is, uh... It's very beneficial to craft the Liquidator set as long, like, as soon as you get it. I, although, you don't need the whole thing. Just the legs is enough to make you immune to the goop pile, which I guess makes sense, because you're just stepping in it. So, um... So, like, if, even if you're not wearing the full set, it is worth it to craft the legs of the Liquidator gear. Because it is, it is quite good. I'm not giving up on you. I won't hear it said that Benjamin Burke let down his team. I've marked the way to the outbound station. There's big red letters saying exit. Even you can't, Mrs. Smithy. <laughs> yep. There they are, the big red letters saying exit. What the? Oh no, a boss fight! Contamination detected. Lockdown in operation. Who could have guessed that there would be a boss Initiating fight here? Disposal measures. Please remain stationary during cleanup procedure. Well, welcome to waste storage, everybody. We are we are fighting uh, fighting ourselves a robot. I like this boss. I I really like this boss. I really like bosses in video games that uh, have multiple stages, multiple parts for you to cut off. And uh, this guy, uh, whose name I've forgotten, but we're going to learn right after the fight is over, has, uh, he's got that in spades. And see, this is why I increase the impact of my weapons by using the hammer and the implant, because in order to knock this thing's legs off, you gotta stun lock it. Now, of course, you've probably already noticed the problem with this boss, which is that the hitbox on the legs is kind of wonky. Like, the, the hitbox on the legs, when it's knocked over like this, 
doesn't exactly correspond to the leg itself. Like, it's, it's, it's very weird. Ooh. And boss fights are, are good for bringing the medieval take injector along, because you get energy en masse in boss fights. And hey, look, we did it. That was easy. What the? Oh, no. So welcome to the second phase of the fight. Uh, it has gotten quite a bit more dangerous now because it's decided to use fire to try and incinerate us. And, uh, of course, it's still got legs for us to cut off, so uh, we're not going to stop cutting off its legs just because it's decided to start flying around. The special kill for this boss is to cut off all of its legs before killing it, because now we have access to the head, so we, we don't have to cut off any more of the legs if we don't feel like it. But I do feel like it. I feel like kicking this thing's ass. Especially because it's trying to charbroil me right now. So, uh, we're, we're gonna keep trying to beat it up here. Now, the, the tough part is getting this leg at the back here, but, uh, thankfully, it's, it's given me ample opportunity. Honestly, I like it. I like that, that the special kill for this thing is cutting off all of the legs, because doing so does not necessarily make the fight easier because once you chop off all the legs it won't like stop and do that leg spinning attack that attack it, it won't do that attack anymore and so it will have like one less safe move for you to use and more dangerous moves by the way being on fire <laughs> being on fire does not hurt you as much as one might assume it does uh what being on fire does is it reduces your stamina regeneration, like, and it hurts you a little bit, but not all that much. Like, you can see that, like, I'm taking a little bit of tick damage because I was standing directly in the fire, but otherwise, you know, doesn't hurt you that bad. I really like the rhythm of this fight, how, how you don't have any opportunity to hit this thing. And then you have ample opportunity to get right in on it. It's, it's very tense and it's very exciting, because this thing does a lot of damage. But it's all for naught, because the firebug is now deceased. And for our trouble, we get the firebug throttle, one of my, uh, one of my favorite weapons in the game. It's a fun boss fight. I think it does a little bit too much damage for where you're at in the game, especially for first-time players, but... Let's let's just check out the Firebug Throttle immediately, because... It's quite good. On its own, just a normal twin rig weapon. But, um... If you do the heavy and light combos... Yeah. <laughs> Exploding backflips. <laughs> the the firebug throttle is one of the more fun weapons, so we'll we'll probably be making good use out of it because, I mean, it kind of matches our suit, but also it's really really cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, it's such a cool weapon. And hey, now we can get out of here. We can go to I don't know, wherever we need to go next, I guess. You might have seen advertisements around for a place called Creo World. Well, I really found our little thief. It's probably the same culprit who's been hitting the lab storerooms. She ended up dropping a purloined biomaster in a hurry to get away. Looks like she was heading towards the old abandoned labs. I'll file a full report when I get back. Security can handle this one from here on out. Sounds like that's where we're heading to. Although, now we have a staff. So now we can go and give this to Irina before we leave. Okay. I'm sorry, but I just can't wait any longer. I hope you're okay, that you're still out there. That you found a safe place. I'm going to take the maglev to the old bio labs now. Try to get there if you can. I'll be waiting. 
My thoughts and prayers are with you. And that is the last we are ever going to hear from Ben Burke. And that's a really weird shame. Because Ben Burke does not appear in this video game ever again after that log. Or, well, I guess it's not a log, I guess it's a communication. Like, the guy is here, and he's taking the train to the biolabs right now. And if we wanted to, we could get on the train to the biolabs and follow him. But, uh... Ben Burke is now, uh... From here on, Sir does not appear in this video game. And it's so strange. I can't tell if it's cut content, if you were supposed to meet with Ben Burke, or if it's if it's implied that you meet with Ben Burke on the train, because you get on the train to go to the biolabs right after he sends you that message. If you if you go you know, if you go in that direction. So it's it's very odd. I am totally unsure what Ben Burke's deal is, and I wish that the developers would like address that in like an FAQ or something, because I don't know what happened to Ben Burke and I'm very curious. Hey Arena. Hey. Shouldn't you be searching a staff for me? Well, I got one. What if I told you I have what you need? Usually saying that is a prelude to disappointment, but hey, I'm game. So, let's see what you've got. All right then, let me introduce you to the Biomaster. Efficient against weeds and vermin, I hope. I owe you. It's nice to know chivalry isn't dead. Better get going now. And just as I was getting to know you. See you around, Irina. Enjoy the Biomaster. For the record, you can give her any staff in the game, including ones that you can't get from, from now. Like, you can give her staffs that you can only have in New Game Plus because they're boss weapons, and she will accept them. What's this? Welcome, visitors of Creole World, to the guided tour of our famous Creole production. Just follow the footprints to the center and get ready for a hell of a tour. First, a certified tour guide will meet you there, show you our mind-blowing fabrication technologies, and tend to your every need before escorting you back to Creole World's many wonderful amusement options. Huh. Always free to you and your family. Welcome visitors of Creo World, World you said. A tour of our famous Creo production home. Okay. Just I'm a fan of amusement parks. To and get to the DLC we go. Hello. Away. First, a certified tour guide we will meet you. 